you know, what a great season. Did it in our way. Friday Night Huddle, sponsored by Ingalls, Champion Chevrolet, Citizens Bank, and Pals. Welcome to Friday Night Huddle. We are counting down the top five games each week from the high school gridiron. Remember, you can get the scores of your favorite team ticking at the bottom of your screen or anytime at the sports section at WCYB.com. But we start our countdown in Church Hill, where both West Ridge and Volunteer both had seasons to forget in 2022, but both hoping to make a return trip to the playoffs this season. One would start the year off with a big win tonight. So here we go, Volunteer hosting. West Ridge in the home opener. The Wolves came ready to play, though. Here's Trey Frazier taking the snap, and he is off. Finds a big gap around the edge, and he is all the way down inside the 30 for a big first down gain, and this sets up Frazier again, and he's going to roll right for the touchdown. He walks in easily to put the Wolves on the board first. Now, Frazier would put on a show here tonight. Volunteer fans ready to go, but Frazier would take the night. Here he is inside the 10, takes the snap again, punching it in for another six. He would go on to score four touchdowns in this one as the Wolves take down Volunteer 40 to nothing for their first one in the season. Here's head coach Justin Hilton. Well, as clean as we would have liked it to be, but our guys played hard. Anytime you get a win in the first game, it's a, it's a bonus. Uh, there's a lot of things we need to get better at. We'll go back and do that, but I'm proud of our guys' effort. Well, it has been a long time since a new head coach roamed the sidelines in Mountain City. But tonight, Rick Wilson takes over the Longhorns program. A tough matchup to start things off against Sullivan East in our number four game this week. Sullivan East gets the party going. Drake, Drake Fisher finds Corbin Lazier for the touchdown. That makes it, oh my gosh, what a catch. That makes it seven to nothing. Patriots, Juan Mejia then runs in for the two-yard touchdown, or for the two-point conversion, rather, that, uh, Makes it eight to seven, Johnson County. How about Fisher going long to Tyler Cross for a big gain in the score? Man, who had him? We gotta work on that defense a little bit. 15 to eight, Fisher then later finds a wide open cross. East goes up 25 to eight. The Longhorns make a game of this one, but East would hang on in the end, winning 28 to 24. Yeah, a lot, a lot of mental mistakes, and again, hats off Johnson County. Those guys fought us tooth and nail. I, I told everybody from the jump, that's why I like playing these guys game one, because you know what you're going to get. You're going to get a tough physical football team that's going to be daggone dangerous in their conference this year. Um, and yeah, we, we've got to come back. Uh, we've got another test next week. We're going to enjoy this one tonight. We got, came out with a win. That's what we're here for. Nice win for East. Two games down, three to go as we count down the top games of the week. And we still have stops in Elizabethan, Bristol, and Johnson City. Plus, we'll check on some of the other top games around Northeast Tennessee, including a stop in 2A and 5A battle in Greenville. Stick with us. What you do for high school football in East Tennessee is unmatched. Sponsored by Ingalls, Champion Chevrolet, Citizens Bank, and Pals. Now here's a look at some of the games that just missed our top five. Starting in the black hole, Chucky Doak and Unique, our first drive for the Black Knights. Rolling the dice on fourth down, and quarterback Nick Palazzo lets one go. He has a man, Isaiah Treadway, reels it in, opening up the scoring. With a chance to strike early, Unique's defense stands tall. Screen press pass gets picked out of the air by Marcus Shoemaker. 
Zaka takes over deep in Black Knight territory, and it sets up this. Brennan repass, takes a hit, but finds Connor McKinney on the shoestring catch. Good work, stakes tackled. He goes in for the score. Chucky Doak, though, runs away with this one, 54 to 12. Over in Greenville, South Green and David Crockett facing off Rebels with just over a minute left in the first. Jacob Susong hands it off, and the Rebels would find the end zone. South Green would mix the extra point, but they would make up for it on their next drive with a short pass for the two-point conversion. 14 to nothing with a little under two minutes left to go. Crockett gets on the board with a touchdown from Dylan Callahan. But the Rebels would like, uh, let up. They win 35 to 18. And Happy Valley have really had their ups and downs in recent years. Both schools would probably consider last season a little down. So there's nothing like a little country rivalry to measure where your team stands. This heat, Cloudland looking for revenge from last season's loss to Happy Valley. Second quarter, no score. And that is until Drew Blevins is going to launch one deep in. It's looking good, but it's picked off by Jacob Stinnett, and he takes it 64 yards all the way back to the house for a pick six. Eight nothing, Cloudland after the two-point conversion. Later in the quarter, Cloudland once again. They'll have the ball back here. We take a look at the sideline this time on the long methodical drive with less than 10 seconds to go. Fourth down and goal. Kyle Birchfield punches it in for the touchdown. 14 nothing, Highlanders. To the third quarter, Happy Valley not backing down, though. Aiden Paul will find Austin Nichols on fourth down. He catches it and fumbles it into the end zone. Luckily, though, Grady Golds is there to jump on the loose ball for a touchdown. Happy Valley down 14-6 in the fourth quarter. Here come the Warriors. Blevins connects with Jamie Esterline on the slant for the touchdown. Warriors can't get the two. They're down by two, 14-12. And Cloudland ends up running out the clock to win this one with more from a happy bunch of Highlanders. Here's News 5's Andrew McClung. Cloudland junior Jacob Stinnett said it best. There is no better feeling than to start the football season 1-0. And that's exactly what Cloudland did tonight in a defensive slugfest. That's all the Highlanders go on the road and get some revenge for last season's loss to Happy Valley, 14-12. The defense was absolutely great today. Um, we were not in shape the way we need to be, but we played as hard as we could. And the third and fourth quarter, they started coming back, went on a 12-0 run. We could have laid down, and we didn't. I'm so proud of our defense. They played their tails off. Defense, I feel like... I'm not bragging on myself, but that pick six, the best feeling in my life. And get this too, Cloudland, 19 players dressed out tonight for them. For Happy Valley, more than 40. And that was one thing that Cloudland did run into in this game was an issue of injuries. They had players getting cramps. But Coach Benfield said he's proud of his bunch for pushing through and finding a way to get a victory. And our kids have heart the size of a lion. Um, and I told them that it's not the size of the, you know, the, the dog in the fight. It's the size of the, you know, the heart in the dog. And we, we really came with it tonight. And I'm so proud of our kids. It's got to have heart. Whenever you got that middle, little numbers, you just got to have heart to win. So what's next for these two? For Happy Valley, they return home and face an even tougher challenge with 3A Unicoi County coming to town. And for Cloudland, they'll head on home to face West Green. Reporting in Elizabethan, Andrew McClung, News 5, WCYB. This week's two biggest games are still to come, both featuring Class 4A juggernauts playing against bigger schools. How would they fare? The answers to come after the volunteer band takes us to break. Have the meat. Friday Night Huddle, sponsored by Ingalls, Champion Chevrolet, Citizens Bank, and Pals. Well, if there's one thing the Greenville Green Devils have never been afraid of, it's playing schools from high classes. The 4A and their non-region schedule includes 6A Dobbins Bennett and 5A Morristown West. And tonight's opponent, Class 5A Tennessee High. Green Devils would run out of the tunnel there for this one, and they would strike first in this one. Corbin Cannon, the quarterback, finds Carson Quillen for the touchdown. Greenville takes a 7-0 lead early. Tennessee High move the ball in their first possession. The Vikings attempting a field goal here, though, but a bad snap ruins the play, and the home team comes up 
empty as they give the ball back to Greenville. Second quarter, now 13-0, and Cannon to Quillen again, and Quillen is going to be running for a long time. There he goes to speed to the house, a 76-yard touchdown to make it 20-0 Greenville, and then in their next possession, it's Quillen lining up and taking it in this time for his third touchdown of the game. Greenville goes on to win this big 28 to 7. Tennessee High is a really good football team. It's going to have a lot of success this, this year. Uh, you know, they'll be a, a, a hard team in 5A for sure. Uh, but just anytime you can come out and get a win, that's big. It's not a region game. They aren't in the same classification. But that doesn't stop the neighborly rivalry between Science Hill and Elizabeth. And this game has produced some pretty good finishes in recent memory. This one started out, though, all Betsy. In the first, Beth Mullins goes around the outside and in for the touchdown to give the Cyclones the early lead. And then the defense, it came to eat. The fumble recovery by Justice Wally sets up yet another touchdown for the visitors. The home team just in shock right now. We go to the second quarter, and it's Jariah Griffin with the score and the great catch. That gives Betsy the 14 to nothing lead. The Cyclones come to the table for more on defense. And let them eat Eli Blevins with the pick six, 21 to nothing visitors. No one saw this coming except for Cole Johnson on prep picks. All right, Science Hill finally breaks through in the second quarter just before the half. Baylor necessary gets the score, fighting in for the toppers, but it wouldn't be enough. Elizabeth then goes on to get the 27-7 win. For more on the big win for the Cyclones, here's News 5's Lauren Bradford. This year's opening matchup between Elizabethton and Science Hill was supposed to be a good game. With some even going so far as to say Science Hill had the upper hand. The Cyclones came in here firing on all cylinders and shut any doubters down. With a fumble in the first quarter, the defense came out dominant, holding the Hilltoppers to one touchdown while picking up two interceptions, with one of them being a pick six. On the other side of the ball, the offense made the plays and moved down the field efficiently to put up 27. I don't know if I've ever been more proud in orange and black just because these guys have worked really hard. We got 19 seniors like these guys right here to step up. We just kept fighting. We knew they were going to be a good team, make a couple runs. So, hey, these players deserve all the credit. Like offense and defense, balled out for both sides. Of this really show. There's something to be said about playing at home, but, uh, you know, our fans out here, they travel. So, I mean, this is it's almost like a home game from us just down the street, you know. So, really a special feeling. We get the same atmosphere, come out here and get a good win. Elizabethan making a statement in game one of the season as they revenge last season's loss with a win in enemy territory. Reporting from Johnson City, Lauren Bradford, News 5, WCYB. Thank you, Lauren. Now taking a look at some of the rest of our scores here tonight. Cherokee losing 27-20. Hampton also dropping by 10 there as we move on to some more scores. Dobbins Bennett falling on the road and also on the opening night in Kentucky. Letcher County Central holding off Shelby Valley by 10. Leslie County losing 30-21. That'll do it for us. We'll see you next week. Scores anytime on our website.